Good morning and welcome to the long coffee break series. Uh, we have some great things in store for everybody coming in the, come the, in the coming weeks. Um, currently, communication and delivery of new ideas is changing rapidly in our environment. Uh, we hope this helps us all navigate our new and hopefully very temporary reality. Um, today, we will be introducing the first major packaged waterside economizer installed 100% at the factory on a fully configurable air cooled chiller. Why is this important to us in Colorado? On water dominant systems such as four pipe fan coil units, it's a constant challenge to meet ASHRAE 90.1. We currently approach this with water cooled chillers and towers or fluid coolers in conjunction with air cooled chillers. Now we can utilize a water side economizer on a high efficiency air cooled screw chiller with IPLVs well over 20 plus IER. That saves on footprint, install cost, controls, maintenance, and operational challenges. With our mild temperatures in Colorado and our, and our extended shoulder seasons, we gain a good amount of economizing hours with this approach, which means our compressors aren't running as often. Um, here with us today is Ute Perkins, who's the head of marketing engineering for Daikin Applied Chillers. Ute's gonna give us a brief overview and some of the benefits of the new AWV air-cooled screw chiller with water side economizer. So Ute, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks you, Travis, I appreciate it. Floor is yours, sir. All right. Um, if we go to the next slide. Yep, sorry, trying to get there. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> there we go, found it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so one of the big things about um, our, our packaged offering uh, that I think is really, uh, really great, innovative, and uh, pretty cool, uh, no pun intended, is the uh, polypropylene pipe that we're using for the header. Um, Daikin has always been uh, an innovator, and when we started developing this product line, um, or this uh, option for this product line, uh, this was one of the things that uh, not only made sense, but really kind of set us apart from everybody else. Now with that polypropylene pipe, um, we get a really low friction, and more, more importantly, a really low weight. Uh, with, that, uh, with that header, we're about 10 times less weight than uh, any competitor that's using a steel header. And that's really significant, especially when you're talking about putting one of these units up on a, up on a rooftop. Uh, the other uh, really um, great benefit was uh, it's clean and it avoids debris. Now you can see that, that picture of the, uh, the steel pipe that we have down there. And that's one that we had in our uh, preliminary testing and development. And when we would take it apart to check it out, you know, that's what it looked like. And that's not conducive uh, for uh, the, uh, the application, any application really, or, or the, uh, uh, some more of the design aspects of our unit. Whereas that uh, polypropylene, it stayed clean. The other great benefit to that was the manufacturing process. Now, I'm gonna talk about two parts of uh, my bullets there, the impervious to corrosion, uh, cost competitiveness uh, of it. Now, uh, some folks uh, were, were talking about, yeah, it's more expensive. Well, maybe per linear foot, it might be a little bit more expensive, but when we start, started looking at the manufacturability of it, it was really, it was a significant savings because we could have two people um, uh, lift that pipe into place and, and move it around and, and handle it, whereas you'd need a crane for the steel piping. Uh, the other aspect that saved us a tremendous amount of time in manufacturing was cleaning of, the, of that steel pipe. When we got that steel pipe from the vendor, it required a lot of cleaning and that took us many hours to get it to the cleanliness that we wanted and desired for our design. And finally, the, uh, the life of, of that polypropylene pipe. Um, some people questioned it. And so we went back to our, um, our provider, our vendor, and they had an option for a coating. And that black coating you see on that pipe uh, is a, a UV protectant. And that gives us a 60 year life on that header pipe. If it's not coated, then it's thick enough uh, to where it extends the life of that, that piping uh, to that 60 year time period. Now, as I sat down and started thinking about the, the biggest aspects of our, of our option, I had to, to consider we're not just offering 
a free cooling option. We're offering, offering a free cooling package chiller. And there are three things that really set us apart from everybody else. Um, the biggest one, and I've always been proud of our compressor uh, and the VVR technology that we use. Um, it's a variable volume ratio that gives us some really um, industry leading IPLVs. And so we couple that with our free cooling and we take really good advantage of it. The other thing about our compressor that has an integrated um, oil separator and it's field serviceable. Not many other competitors offer a field serviceable screw compressor. Uh, to me, that's, that just sets us above and, and beyond everybody else. And of course, as I've already discussed, uh, the innovation in, in using that polypropylene piping. Uh, again, Dykin being an innovator, this was really a significant step in that direction using that polypropylene. Um, the, the next part of our design would be the coil, our free cooling coil. Now you'll see here we use obviously a, a coil on top of a coil. We have our condenser coil, refrigerant coil, uh, set up right behind our free cooling coil. They're both microchannel. Um, we're big believers in microchannel based on the performance. And as we were developing this, um, we used a standard microchannel and our pressure drop wasn't where we wanted it to be. We were still probably top water pressure drop uh, based on our competition. Um, we went back and pushed our vendor uh, to provide us with a, a, another alternative and they did. They came back with a microchannel coil where the microchannels were slightly large enlarged and so our pressure drop went down significantly so now we're right in the middle of the uh, the, the market where um, if you compare us to a, a standard uh, copper aluminum we're just slightly higher but anybody else that's using a micro channel uh, we're significantly lower uh, based on our design and so I was really really happy about that uh, the other two things I'll point out while you have um, uh, this image on the slide is our header design it's high on the inlet side um, and low on the return side. So that gives us an additional design uh, pressure drop as far as the water goes. Now, speaking about microchannel coils, of course, you get much better heat transfer with the microchannel and a lower um, air pressure drop across it. And so we save on efficiency and, and uh, improve important performance based on that microchannel technology. Again, we're big believers in that. We use it on uh, just about all of our products, our air-cooled products um, uh, across our product offering. Uh, what you see here is our 30 fan unit um, and I wanted to just give you a, a picture of what that fan or what that unit looks like. Extremely long obviously but it can really take advantage of um, our configurability uh, in our product offering and that's one of the things uh, that we that on my previous slide the bullets that I may not have touched on but we do offer a true configurable chiller. Now we have one competitor that that says that they can do configurability in their, in their chiller, and they do, and they offer it about three, three size ranges. But we offer it on every size across our product range. And that's really important because you can really take advantage of, of whatever aspect or, or, or feature is most important for your application efficiency, mechanical cooling, whatever, we can configure the unit to meet that. And that's really, really powerful when you're talking about free cooling, because we could do less mechanical cooling and more free cooling. Um, our free cooling offering right now um, that's available today for, for order is on our 12, 22, and 30 fan units. So you, real quick, um, this is Travis. So 12, 22, and 30, can you touch on the tonnages that those, because we obviously refer to our model numbers by fans. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. What is the tonnage of the 12, the 22, and the 30 ton, and the 33, or the 30 fan unit? Sorry. Okay, yeah, so speaking to that configurability, that's a great question. Uh, so our 12 fan unit, you can, you can rate it for, for about 100 to 185, 190 tons, and that's at full capacity. Uh, 22 fan is going to range from 155, 160 to 360 tons. Uh, our 30 fan gives you the, the biggest operating range uh, com of configuration, and you can have 100% capacity at 220 tons of mechanical cooling up to about uh, 565, 570 uh, mechanical cooling tons. So that's a huge range that you can configure and mix and match that, um, uh, that unit for. Okay, um, the other thing I wanted to point out, and this is a 12 
span unit. Uh, one of the, the big aspects and the, the design considerations I pushed our uh, engineering team on, on building this is I have a little bit of a, a technical service background. And so uh, uh, serviceability of the unit was a really, really big factor of, of mine and um, of the customer. I didn't want our technicians to spend a lot of time on the unit, um, on the building, uh, moving things around, trying to get to components. And, if, and as you can see here, everything is accessible, easily accessible. Uh, none of our header piping is in the way. Um, um, you have free access to the compressor, to the evaporator, to the connections. Um, it's, it's really, they did an impressive job when they built this and maintained that serviceability um, of the unit. Um, this is just a picture, and I wanted to show this because I'm really proud of this part of, of what we offer and this option, and it's a, it's a bag. Again, I, I've, I've worked with some, some, uh, some other manufacturers, and they've bagged their equipment um, or wrapped it in shrink wrap. This is not a shrink wrap. It's a, it's a legitimate bag. They put it over the entire unit, and then they heat it up and shrink it to fit um, so that you don't get any... Um, 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 tears or rips in it as it's traveling. And I've seen that happen in, in just the regular shrink wraps or, or, or so forth. And we actually had to get a special bag for the, for the free cooling option to fit. And we did not want to go with the shrink wrap. Uh, just a really funny uh, story. We had a, a customer in and they were looking at this and they said, well, where do we send this back to when we finish, when, after you ship it? And they're like, no, it's yours to keep. And they said, well, this is a really heavy duty bag. You don't, you don't require these back. And and when we told them no, they said, well, we're going to use it as a party tent because we really like it. So uh, just a, just kind of a funny uh, incidental uh, uh, note there on, on our uh, shipping container. Um, finally, I did want to touch base on one uh, specific operating um, um, sequence that we have built into our, our system. So, of course, you have 100% free cooling and you have 100% mechanical cooling. But our controls will be set up so that when uh, it's suitable outside, we can uh, quote unquote pre-cool uh, your uh, water entering in the evaporator. And so why is that significant? Because you can have simultaneous free cooling and mechanical cooling. Well, why would you want that? And this is why. Now, if we go back to our VVR technology and our compressor where we really have some super uh, high uh, IPLVs and uh, those efficiencies are, are tremendous there with that VVR technology. We can really extend that um, part load operating envelope. And so now it's not just contained to a certain certain period. You could, you could require 100% of your cooling load in the building, but in those you know, moderate temperate days, we can pre-cool that water before it goes in the evaporator to really uh, boost the efficiency of the product. Awesome. You, real quick, um, can you speak to the low ambient capabilities of the air culture, specifically, um, you know, low ambient temps and full capacity, oh. say on like a, a 30 fan unit? Yeah, what absolutely. Would our operating range be? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's a great, and that's perfect unit to, to talk about. Um, because as you know, uh, talking about, um, you know, configurability is huge. And so if we're talking about maximizing free cooling, uh, we want to do that with the most um, um, coil surface area as possible. So if, let's say, for instance, we're at the bottom range of our 30 fan units, say 220, 250 tons, but we want to maximize or build that unit to, to really take advantage of free cooling. I was playing around with this the other day, and I got our 100% free cooling on a 30 fan unit unit at, I don't know, maybe it's about 250, 300 tons worth of cooling at 35 degree ambient temperature outside. And that's huge um, when you're talking about free coolings because the higher your outdoor ambient temperature and your 100% your free cooling capacity is where you want to be. And so that 35 degrees uh, was, was actually really, really good uh, compared to, to some of the rest of the uh, um, selections that I've seen, and that's at a 44 degree leaving water temperature. So that was that was pretty impressive, I thought. Again, if you can't tell, I'm pretty proud of, of this product. I think it hits a lot of important um, application um, features and benefits that people will be uh, looking for in a free cooling chiller. Awesome. You Thank you so much for your time, um, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Please join us next week for our Rebel with a Cause.
where we'll be introducing the Daikin Rebel Applied Unit. I hope this was helpful and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you all. Thanks, Travis.